a very short video that uh, Sandy Aguilera uh, did uh, regarding what happened in Culiacán and how the Mexican people, especially the people from Culiacán, Sinaloa, feel about it and um, what uh, their take is and, and um, how are the people responding and feeling about AMLO regarding what happened. So here she starts it off by saying, my cousin sent me this photo. And by the way, I'm going to add, this is where my family is from as well. Uh, I have my brother and many of my uh, daughter, uh, sister's kids uh, live there. My grandparents uh, lived there. And um, um, my aunts, my mother's sisters and brothers live there. So this uh, is particularly close to my heart as well. Uh, and I feel the same way as well regarding uh, what AMLO decided to do and how it affected us, the people from there, and people who have people there. And just so you know, um, this this was very touching to me, and, and so I thought I needed to do this one. So she sent her, co her cousin sent her this picture uh, at a baseball game. So she said, with the city still in ashes after what happened with a uh, confrontation that was one of the most violent in many years. Now, los colichis, that means people from Culiacán. That's what they call them. Um, and that's that's what I guess uh, my, my mother's side of my family Myself and my brothers and sisters were colichis. So she said the colichis went out to do what they love the most, to watch a uh, baseball game. Oh, so that hit somebody in the face, the baseball did. That was Orozco, something about, uh, well, anyway, it's something in the game. <laughs> so she told me that, she or he told me that um, the the sh shooting had already stopped. And the people went out to the streets again. And I was very happy about that. And by the way, so was I. Because in the whole country, they may criticize the strategy of the federal government. They might talk about the lack of mm, balls of the president because he released the son of Chapo Guzman. And there might be people who uh, may say he's a coward and that he, he was a failure. Decir lo que and they can say whatever they like. Es muy fácil pedir cuando... Because it's very simple and easy to ask for blood when the dead are not from your family. Los muertos, no los ponen tu familia. And the dead don't belong, don't belong to yours. So here it says, yo que voy a saber. So she said, so what am I going to know? So what do I know? Kind of like. El jueves, por primera vez en muchos años, escuché con el corazón en la boca como durante más de cuatro horas. So uh, on Thursday, I sat there with my heart in my throat when for about four hours, during four hours, Culiacán, fue zona de guerra. Uh, Culiacán, Sinaloa, was a war zone. Vi mi tierra arder. And I saw my land on fire and burn. Vi mi familia, mis amigos, siendo rehenes de la... And I saw that my people, my friends and family were being used as um, um, hostages. For the uh, for the um, narcotics traffickers. 
delincuencia. The information was confusing. The information was confusing. En un operativo habían atrapado a los hijos del Chapo. So apparently, in uh, the um, uh, some kind of operation, they had trapped the sons of El Chapo. Ivan Archivaldo y Ovidio Guzmán. Uh, Ivan Archivaldo and Ovidio Guzmán. Después, unos audios filtrados en redes nos dijeron. And then after that, some audio tapes that were filtered in the uh, webs let us know that that they had already let go of Ivan, but that Ovidio was still um, pending. And then we were witnesses to the cartel extending all their forces to rescue the rat. He's known as the raton, the rat, or mouse. So the, uh, the city, um, in the city was the site, and they blocked the streets, and they liberated some prisoners from the uh, jail de Aguaruto. And it was said that it was by the order of Mayo Zambada. And hundreds of reinforcements came down from the hill with the order to burn it all if they did not let Ovidio go. No está claro quién dio la orden. It is not clear who gave that order. Pero de más de horas de but after more than four hours of terror, terror en las calles de la ciudad, in the city's uh, streets, el hijo del capo fue they liberated the son of El Chapo. Pocos huevos fue lo menos que le dijeron a Andrés Manuel. And the least of what they said to the president was that he had little balls. Las críticas sobre su debilidad estratégica llenaron las redes. And the critiques over his uh, strategic uh, planning or uh, works was all over the web. Una enorme fila de expertos en se There was an enormous line of experts uh, that had put their uh, two cents in. Here he says, <clears throat> uh, military forces with an order not to shoot uh, versus civilians that were armed. Incredible to uh, your level of stupidity. And uh, idiot, Benihis is like being a real idiot and the lack of balls. Or he has no balls, basically. And people uh, were giving their, their opinion regarding national security. And this one says, no, this is not the fault of Calderon. This is not the fault, or this is the fault of the terrible strategy for security of Lopez Obrador. Accept, accept it and sol solve it. Um, you wanted uh, to sit on the chair. Now you got it. And these were the things they said over the matter. But I'm going to add here also, another thing that was said was by the ex-president uh, Fox. Um, he uh, said something like, uh, oh, what are you going to do? Go tell their mommies and their grandmas? Are you going to go tell on them? Um, tell them to behave. Why don't you? <laughs> so they were making fun of the fact that Obrador was appealing to the young people that they need to um, not misbehave because it brings embarrassment and shame to their families. And in the Mexican culture, if they, someone said they were going to tell your mom or your grandma with a strict uh, corporal punishment we used to have, we knew we better behave. And so this was a great strategy for, for uh, people to say, I'm going to tell your mom or your grandma. So this, a lot of Mexican people can understand this kind of thinking.
para las autoridades no había forma sencilla de salir de ese asunto. And for the authorities, there was no simple way to get out of this matter. Pero lo que tengo claro es que no había una sola posibilidad de que las fuerzas armadas ganaran esa confrontación. But what we did know was that there was not a single way that the armed forces were going to win this battle. In Culiacán. No sin que la ciudad se llenara de sangre. But not, at least, not without filling the whole city with blood. La amenaza del cartel fue muy clara. The threat from the cartel was very clear. Estaban dispuestos a destruir Culiacán. They had, they were disposed, <coughs> or they had um, decided uh, to destroy Culiacán. <coughs> si no liberaban a su patrón. If they did not liberate their boss. Irían contra todos. El... They would go against everyone. Entre esos todos está mi familia y... And amongst all of those was my family and mine Mis amigos. and my friends. So for me, this is not a matter of figuring out who's got the biggest balls, huevos, si el cartel o el the cartel or the government. Además, ya lo vimos con Calderón. Se le... Because we have already seen this with Calderón. De frente, yo, he combated them uh, head on los muertos, and we're still counting the dead a su paso. that they left in their uh, path. Y no estoy que los dejen hacer lo que Pero, and I am not asking that they allow them to do whatever they want. So, but this is something that the strategy of Chapo narco, a los de, uh, wants, uh, wants us to combat uh, uh, narcotic trafficking by, alto perfil, no. by keeping a high-level profile, it didn't work. No ser en we don't need to be experts in national security para eso. to understand this. Hemos visto fracasar esa estrategia. Ay. We have seen this strategy fail for many years. Tras años. Year after year. En el sexenio de Calderón se detuvieron a 11 grandes capos. Entre... So in the six year term of uh, Calderón, they uh, detained six uh, uh, great uh, big uh, mafia leaders like Capo or Chapo. So one of them was Vicente Zambada, the one was, this one is Heriberto Tescano, Sandra Avila, Alfredo and Arturo, Train Leiva, Vicente Carrillo, and they killed Nacho Coronel. And with Peña Nieto, se fijaron 122 objetivos. they fixated on 122 objectives of high profile. De alto perfil. En su sexenio, vi... During their six-year term, Vimos caer al Z40. we saw a uh, uh, Z740 fall, al Z42. Z4, uh, 742 Os, the attorney, a Nazario Moreno, a... A Nazario Moreno, Quique Plancarte, a Servando Gómez Latuta, y Servando Gómez Latuta, por supuesto, al Chapo. And Chapo. Ganamos. Did we win? Imaginen que Andrés Manuel se pone firme. Imagine that if Andrés Manuel had remained firm. Que decide que no permitirá que el cártel se sienta. And that he, if he decided that he would not permit the cartel to feel más poderoso. that they were more powerful than the government, that the force of the state would not bend under the uh, control of some delinquents. So imagine that that they do not let go of Ovidio because that would be ridiculous. But the government is what it is, but it doesn't do uh, the bidding of anyone. 
And then what? What would we do with the people from Culiacán, Culichis, that would have been running scared and trying to find refuge? What would we do with the mothers with their babies in their arms? What would we do with all those that, with that decision, would be forced to burn in the middle of the, for, of the fire that was caused by the simple misfortune of being in the wrong place at the wrong time? They would have said, let them die. Well, collateral damage, but we're not letting go of Ovidio. Es que es muy fácil toda la fuerza del Because it is very simple to demand all the force of the state los lejos. When, the, when the blows are far from you. Sí. Creo que hubo cosas mal en ese... Yes, I think there was a lot of things, bad things that happened. Operativo in that operation. And I could enumerate them and it would take some time for each one. But it's also wise to pick your battles. But if Andres Manuel had imposed his ego above the civil safety, And if he had taken a different route or decision than the one that he made, and then we would be talking about a city that was uh, situated, and I would most probably not have this picture of my of my family. And then she says, and what am I going to know? Or what do I know? Very interesting, right? Um, and I agree. Um, this, I, I, I really like how they put that together. Um, I think it was very well done. And um, I, I, um, I, I'm in agreement, definitely. My family um, uh, survived it. And my brother had a close call. He had to... Uh, elude uh, the, um, you know, to try and get around where they were shooting because that's how close they were. So for me, it touched home. And uh, my brother sent me the videos that I made with the other uh, uh, video that I made was from the videos from his phone. So um, uh, I know this, this was the right thing to do. And uh, Mexico and most, he's got a higher approval rating now. People know that when he says something, he means it. And he's out to protect people. Uh, and he's not, uh, and so far everything he said, he's done. And he is fighting corruption. And he is giving free education. And he is uh, giving free health care and medication. He is giving an increase, double the money for the elderly. Uh, he, he is opening new hospitals, uh, getting personnel for each new hospital, building, allowing the uh, people to build their roads um, and giving them all the materials to build the roads in the 570 uh, municipalities of Oaxaca and the rest of the country. Uh, there's so much more that he's doing. And it's an example, I think, of what can be done when a, um, when a person really cares about uh, their people and their country. And I believe that um, AMLO is someone that's going to be remembered in history um, because of his wisdom. And, and, I, and I'm going to tell you one thing, that... I believe that of the of the people that are running um, in the U.S. for president, there is one that is like him, that has been fighting for civil rights, that 
wants to give um, er, or has said he will give free education, free health care, um, or, or, you know, abolish the debts of the students too. Many, many of the things that AMLO does, Bernie did as well. And uh, I think he's the right guy for America to get out of the mess because if we keep going the way we're going, everything's going to be privatized. What's left of education, already the pharmaceuticals and the hospitals have control of everything. Uh, drug companies, insurance companies. There's so much corruption in the U.S., and we need to root it out. Thanks a lot. Bye.